Hello everyone, it's me, Clayton. I just finished watching episode 6 of Young Justice Phantoms. Now, continuing on with last week's episode, with Cassandra and Onyx both being under suspicion, and with the Shadow... The League of Shadow members are apparently immune to psychic readings. I'm guessing Fandle Savage and Lady Shiva find their way around everything. It seems that not only are Artemis and Cheshire forced to work together because it takes a shadow to know a shadow, but it seems that Lady Shiva has been hiding a few more secrets than, than we even thought she was. Along with this episode having a ton of Alice in Wonderland references, to the point where Cheshire's code words for, for uh, Artemis to meet up in places are, we're all mad as hatters here. I'm pretty sure they did that just so they could have a Lewis Carroll reference in this episode, but yeah, I like Alice in Wonderland, so I'll, I'll buy it. Plus, we actually get to learn a bit more about Orphan in this season. Orphan was kind of introduced in Season 3 in, you know, a rushed manner, so we didn't get to know that much about her at all. But I'm guessing that was just so they could, you know, flesh her out a bit later. Turns out I was kinda right. Turns out she's actually Cassandra Wusan, the daughter of Lady Shiva, and the reason that she never talks is because she had her vocal cords severed, was never allowed to learn to read, so the, literally the only language she has is body language. Which honestly seems like it would be a major handicap, but it's a kind of disability that does make sense when it comes to making an ultimate assassin. If an, assa an assassin can't spill anything if it can't talk if they can't talk at all, right? Especially considering that we get to see we get to see a, another great action scene in this episode featuring Black Spider and Rictus. Though Black Spider I didn't think was this talkative or this jokey in the comics, but I'm guessing they tried to give him a, a few Spider-Man trades. But Spider-Man would never make jokes about web balls, I'll let you know that. Seriously, you're gonna have to make you have to make that kind of innuendo towards towards Cheshire. I'm pretty sure she'd cut his balls rather than admire them. But aside from that, I do appreciate that it seems still that Cassandra and Onyx are both telling the truth to the best of their ability, and neither one of them seems to show any kind of deception. So maybe they're both telling the truth as best as they know, maybe neither one of them are moles and they just think the other ones are moles. We don't know. I like that it keeps the intrigue up. Plus it allows Shiva to go into this arc as a bit, as a bit more of a major antagonist, which I appreciate. Considering in most versions of Batman media that I'm aware of, Lady Shiva usually either is a side villain, a sometimes ally, or in the cases of the At Batman Arkham games, an underused, an underused boss character. So having her here as a major antagonist actually does help out a bit when it comes to how much I appreciate her. Plus, even though I've never heard of Rictus from the comics, I think his powers are cool, and I think his mechanical body is pretty neat. Though, I have no idea how Cassandra thought she could even stand against him when she only has one arm. That takes away a lot of your strength, no matter who you are. But yeah, on, 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 on top of Studio Mirror still having a great sense of animation here, I like a lot of the dialogue between Artemis and Cheshire, since their relationship was one of the things that I felt was most intriguing about the original few seasons. And I'm really interested in seeing how the breakout in Santa Prisca is going to go, considering I know for a fact that this storyline can only get more action-packed from here, and I want to see how this affects Cheshire and Artemis going forward. So, see you next week.